What's up guys, how's everybody doing? Q&A video, let's do it. I'm gonna go straight into it. I'm gonna start off with Instagram first. Um, maybe change the scenery and we'll do the YouTube comments first. We're gonna start off with Instagram. First question, Will Holmes, I'm coming soon. Will you be trying to Birmingham anytime soon? Yes, I will be. Um, I'm hoping maybe either this weekend or the next weekend. I get Fridays and Saturdays off now, so I'll come up either Thursday evening or Friday morning, spend a couple of days there. So shout me when you're there, Will, text me. Will Holmes again, leg exercise to bring up the outer quad. For me, leg extensions, single leg extensions, turn the feet out slightly and just, you have to focus on squeezing the outside of the leg more than anything. Um, you can turn your feet in and squeeze the inside of the leg, but turn the feet out. Guys, play with foot placements on leg extensions. Very, very good tip. Um, but yeah, turn the legs out, squeeze hard. Dean Ritchie, how to plan a, fi uh, how to plan a routine around a five by five and what weight to work at and what to do when you hit a sticking point. So how to plan around a five by five, I'll just do supplements. So for example, if you're doing a five by five bench, I'll just supplement the five by five. If you're solely trying to gain strength, that is, that's regarding, hit a little bit of incline, maybe a little bit of triceps and you can supplement around that. Again, if you're gonna do five by five deadlift, do a little bit of back, pull downs, rows, and supplement around it. Um, what weight to work out? I read some of that it was 85% of your one rep max to hit five by five, maybe 75%. Don't quote me on this, I'm not really sure. But I would go from a range about 70% to 85%, trying to keep it as heavy as you can. Um, and what to do when you hit a sticking point? Up calories, increase frequency. That's pretty much it. If you're in a deficit, you're gonna hit a sticking point more often. If you're not, adding those calories in, you're not adding the fuel to your body, you're not over, uh, putting your body into a surplus, you're not gonna get stronger. So if you get to a sticking point, you can try, try something new, add some calories in, up the frequency, but I'll stick to one of those three things. Try something new would be, would be quite good and then you can come back to it later. Uh, Lauren SVL Fitness, uh, I can't click on your profile from here so I'm gonna assume that you're a girl. What would you do when you're already at low calories, about 1800 or so, already doing five cardio sessions a week and you still plateau? It's gonna be as straightforward as reducing calories or increasing cardio. Guys, when I was about to go on stage, I don't know what you're gonna do, Lauren, but if you're about to go on stage, that's not, not, that's not uncommon. That's very, very common. I was doing 2,250 calories, bearing in mind I'm 85 kilos, six foot one, 24 years old, got a high activity level, doing cardio seven times a week, training six times a week, so. You know, you do have to push your body very, very far and into places that your body doesn't actually want to go. So, it's not healthy, like I'm not I'm not advocating that it's healthy, I'm not saying that you should take your calories down or that you should put your cardio up, but if I was training you and you weren't lean enough, those were the two things that I'd be doing. And also 1800 calories isn't too bad if you are a girl. I'm not sure, if you're not a girl, I apologize, the calories are quite low, so let's try and stick to it. Steve Gibbons Fitness, is cardio necessary on a cut? Short sure answer is no. The reason is you just need to create a calorie deficit so you can eat less and less and less and you will lose weight, it's no problem. The only reason why I would say cardio should be implemented is to keep your food as high as possible um, further on down the line, yeah. Aaron Mansurg94, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. What is your approach to peak week and show day with regards to macros and water? So uh, I will do a small little depletion, say, Say we've got um, show day Saturday, so the Saturday before I will start my depletion of carbs, I'll just reduce probably 50 grams, 50 grams, 50 grams until I'm on about, it pretty much insignificant by probably Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I will then start increasing my calories uh, and increasing my carbs. So I'll go up to probably 400 grams for the first day, 600 and then 700 and just fill up into the competition. Um, I'm no expert on peak week, but I know that I need to eat more you need to eat more than you think you do. And everyone always thinks they're gonna get a fat in a week. You will not get a fat in a week. Load those carbs up, come in for, as long as you don't overindulge on stupid, stupid carbs, you should be pretty, pretty good. So, something along that. I've also done a video on peak week, so you can go back. In fact, I'll link it right here, so you can go back and check that out. Joe Banks, what's your opinion on the best ab exercises for def for development, bigger blocky abs and rep ranges, etc. lower reps of weighted crunches or higher reps and non-weighted exercises? Um, same as every other muscle guys, if you want to grow it, you need to progressively overload. If you want to get stronger, you need to progressively overload. So add weight, add reps, add a set. Um, I personally just go for one upper ab uh, movement, one lower ab movement, and one twisting movement for the obliques. Um, and just progressively overload these over time. So at the moment I'm doing leg raises, 
I'm doing decline crunches and I'm also doing um, Russian twists or wood, wood, wood chucks when you get the cable and you, and you turn left and right just to really kind of get some development into my into my abs as I do feel they're actually a weak point. I used to train my abs every single day, I had a great six pack, I was like there we go, I'm fine. Honestly my six pack was better when I was 16, I didn't even train to the gym like then because I trained them every single day so something I'm trying to catch up right now. Ever tried intermittent fasting? If yes, how is it for you? If not, would you consider it? Yes, I would say I definitely do a form of intermittent fasting when cutting because I feel like when I wake up, I'm never like really, really hungry, apart from when I'm in the depths of crap I am. Um, but I find it to wake up and not eat rather than to wake up, eat, and then not eat. So sometimes you've got the 10 hours that you've been sleeping or the seven to 10 hours that you've been sleeping. Hopefully if you're in prep, you wanna be getting at least seven hours sleep. So that's 10 hours you haven't been eating. Uh, sorry, seven to 10 hours that you haven't been eating. And then you wake up and if you just keep that going to, I don't know, maybe 16, 17 hours. So maybe if you wake up at 10, just try and eat around two-ish for your first meal. That's a good amount of time that you're fasting. And I find that I can eat more, well, it feels like I'm eating more later on. So I actually don't go to bed hungry because I can't sleep when I'm hungry, guys. So I always try and backload, almost backload and have more food towards the end of the evening. Um, just to satisfy me. Because I find it so much easier to not eat in the morning. So. That's the way I do I wouldn't want to finish my last meal at like 7 o'clock, go to bed at 12, because that's five hours where I'm not going to eat, and I just, I just couldn't hack that after eating during the day, that is. King Sen, best exercise for tricep thickness. Uh, anything that is going to be overhead and working with the long head of the bicep, because the long head is the biggest and thickest part of the bicep. It's going to give you that big, nice hang down there, whereas the outside head here is more just for shape and the horseshoe. So definitely anything that works the long head. So you've got closed grip presses, you've got tricep uh, pull downs as long as you're not twisting outwards, uh, French press, overhead press, anything like that. Progressively overload it. Neuron W, what shows are you competing in this year? I'm thinking to replicate last year's. Um, so the Welsh Classic, the British Finals, and hopefully get, I think I might have a qualification for the Diamond Cup anyway. I need to double check that, and then that one. So three competitions. Maybe I'll go a little bit earlier um, because I need the most amount of time I can to get bigger. I think I need a six month bulk and I was I was actually gonna start cutting probably mid-February so I could compete in June, but I need longer guys. You gotta be realistic, I need longer. I'm now the strongest I've ever been officially on across the whole board. I'm also lighter than I've ever been. I'm also leaner than I've ever been. Sorry, at this point in the bulk. So I just, I don't think there's any point in upsetting the momentum that I have right now because I really feel like I'm growing and I'm getting bigger and I'm getting stronger relatively quickly. So I definitely want to keep in that. So yeah, September was what I'm looking at. Maybe, maybe late August. Uh, C Fresk C. When adding size, what training split would you recommend or personally use? I use the same split. Uh, I'll use the same split all year round. Like, I don't think you should change it. I think you should just be training the way that you can adhere to most and the way that you prefer most. Um, but don't be afraid to change it if you think you need to work on something. So for example, during this bulk, I've been I've changed it a lot. I was doing push-pull legs, shoulders, arms, and now I've changed it around a little bit, so I'm hitting my back a little bit more because I feel like I neglected it a little bit. Um, and just things kind of constantly change. So constantly assess yourself of, of how you look and how you think you want to change, and then just maybe adapt your workout accordingly. But honestly, there's no, like, I don't think you should just be like heavy f compound movements when you're bulking and then light high reps when you're when you're when you're cutting because you need to be lifting heavy all year round. If you're natural guys, you need to be lifting all year round as heavy as you can, trying to, trying to get stronger. If you're losing weight, you need to try and get stronger because in that process of trying to get stronger, your body's gonna say, no, I need this muscle to get stronger and you're forcing it and forcing it to keep the muscle. You will lose muscle during a cut, but your job is to make you, make you lose as least muscle as possible. So just keep lifting heavy and do a split that you can adhere to year round. YouTube comments, we'll see you in a sec. Okay guys, questions on the YouTube comments. Uh, Sainabu, probably saying that wrong, I'm sorry. I know you watch my videos, I know you comment. Thank you so much, I appreciate you. Um, my question is, how do you progress on bench press? I've been stuck for a few weeks and now nothing is moving. So I'd definitely program, um, if you're looking to specifically build up bench press, I'll definitely program and actually start tracking your, your, your lifts as opposed to just going in and saying, okay, I want to get 60 kilos today. Just a random number. Um, kind of go in and say, nope, today I've got four sets of three at this weight. Next week is four sets of four at this weight, example, example, etc. Um, so implement um, a training schedule, account, be accountable for what you're doing to make sure that you're doing the right thing at the right time and not just going in there mindlessly lifting because there is a method to everything, guys. 
um, up your calories. Um, if you're looking just to get stronger, just add a little bit of calories, maybe maybe have like a good little pre-workout meal just to make sure you're fueled for that workout. Um, and yeah, definitely, definitely one of those three things should help. If not, message me again and I'll help you out. But uh, HD, are you only doing one set of each exercise or is it more than one but they're not on film? Yes, it's, I do two, uh, two sets of each exercise, one heavy, five to nine reps, one lighter, 10 to 12 reps. Um, I just don't film them all because it'll get repetitive and boring. Tywin, do you still want to move to America with that cretin in charge, Josh? Um, yeah, I do. Um, I mean, I don't really want to start a political debate on this video, but I mean, we all have our views about Trump, good and bad, and I'm sure even the pro-Trump supporters have good and bad, uh, good and bad views about him. Um, yeah, I, I love America. I love the people. I love the environment, I love the atmosphere, so I'm, I'm, I do really want to get to America at some point. Not necessarily move there for life, but just have a good portion of of time there just so I can live a little bit. Maybe I like it, maybe I won't. Greg Davis, I saw you the other day. How are we doing, dude? Um, how come using Smith Machine for your presses? So the training technique that I use at the moment is just uh, loads of different variations of different exercises. Um, for example, on chest day, uh, I do Flat press, I do decline press, I do incline dumbbells, I'll do, this is on different days by the way, uh, smith press, uh, machine press, like I do so many different uh, exercises, but I'm just trying to get strong across all of them. So I do barbell without the smith machine, and I also use the smith machine, I also use dumbbells, um, and it's just what I've been set for my coach to be honest, like, like I don't really feel there's a problem from using the smith machine, all it does is just locks you in a singular range of motion, straight up, straight down. Um, you're still working muscles as long as you've got good form um, and it's a, definitely a tool that you can use especially if you've got bad joints or you know very strong across dumbbells um, but I'm not using it for that reason I'm just using it because it's a different exercise that I want to get strong on it's a different angle um, and it's a different exercise that I want to get strong on Charlie Savile 66 days out from my first comp top three tips for the rest of prep keep your foot on the gas um, I found that maybe towards the end as I like don't get me wrong, like, I was fucked. Like, my body was wrecked, and my mind was wrecked, and emotionally, like, I was I was taking a toll, but I think I feel like almost, like, I stepped off the gas in terms of training. Like, I was just like, okay, I need to go train because I need to burn calories, as opposed to I need to go train to keep my muscle. And, and maybe, like, uh, this is a quite a cool one that um, my coach is quite a big advocate of. Um, say, for example, you do 5,000 steps a day, um, as you get deeper into prep, you get more tired, so you want to sit down more. So you do less and less steps, and your body's just saying, nah, nah, just sit down for a bit, just sit down for a bit. So in between kind of whatever workouts and cardio, you become lazier, and you actually start to do less, so your body's starting to compensate. So you're, you know, you're not, you're decreasing calories, and you're eating less, but you're also doing less, so you just kind of stay the same for a bit. And I feel like I stayed the same for a good four, five, six weeks after my kind of first, second competitions, because I feel like, not that I meant to ease off the gas, I think my body was just like, oh, I can't anymore. Whereas this time I'm gonna make a very, very conscious effort to keep going. Sorry, that was a long first point. Uh, top three tips, second tip, you you gotta be leaner than you think you need to be. People think they're shredded when they got a six pack, you're not shredded until you got veins sticking out your ears. So keep going further than you probably need to do. Um, get some good people around you because it gets lonely, it gets hard, you start to isolate yourself. So get some people who can deal with that shit and, and still stick by you at the end of it because that, that was one big thing that really, really helps me. Ryan Cairns, uh, what size are your arms? Because they look huge. Uh, <laughs> they're definitely not huge, they're probably my weakest point. Uh, last time I measured them I was leaner, so 15, uh, 15 and a half inches, so I would say probably 16 inches. Maybe a tiny bit bigger if I'm really lucky, but there's a lot of body fat around there as well, so it's not gonna not crazy big. H N B N N N N N N N N. Uh, seen you comment loads of times, so thank you very very much. I appreciate it. How are you bulking on 4,500? Is your maintenance 400 uh, 4,000 calories? How did you increase your maintenance? So your maintenance calories, your T D E E, your daily expenditure of energy. Um, will increase with body weight and also activity. So I walk 10,000 steps a day for one. I train five times a week. I also stand on my feet all day um, with my new job. 
so my output is pretty damn high anyway. Um, as well as that, I've slowly increased my calories over time, so my body's become accustomed to it. Uh, yeah, I am gaining body fat and I am gaining weight, but I haven't like dumped 500 calories on each week. So when I first started this bulk, I was on 3,200-ish calories, no cardio, and I went up to 3,300, 400, 500, and I just built it up over time. This has been 13, 14 weeks in the motion now, guys, so I have been putting my calories up very gradually and just making sure I don't bump my calories up thousands because you're going to gain unwanted body fat. So honestly, guys, if I miss a meal at the amount of food that I'm eating now, if I miss a meal, I wake up lighter. So I'm 4,200 calories, I'll be lighter the next day. Like, it's crazy. So I'm, I'm in a very, very good me metabolic, me metabolic situation right now, which is good. So yeah, that's how you increase it. Just increase your activity, increase your food input over time, and your metabolism will increase. Uh, Aaron Ellsworth, looking thick and fuller than ever, brother. Have you hopped on? Nothing negative meant by that question. Nope, I haven't hopped on anything yet. Um, and I say yet because I feel like I will probably take that step at some point in my lifetime. I'm not sure when, I'm still 24 years old. So, and like you said, like I'm looking thicker and fuller than ever. Like I'm very realistic in terms of, in terms of my body, I think, like correct me if I'm wrong. Um, like I feel like I, I look better than I ever have. I feel stronger than I ever have. I'm nowhere near as fat as I was last year at this point. And I'm similar weight-ish, give or take two kilos. Um, so I really do feel like this next competition season is going to be the best ever. But I also feel like there's a smart way to do it. And I want to take the smart route and the calculated route. So I want to exhaust what I'm doing right now first. Um, and then look to it in the future. So, no. Marius Roloff, how are we doing, dude? Um, we talked a few times, so good to see you on here. Uh, are you going to travel to Africa at some point, specifically Namibia? or South Africa. Um, I've never, I've been to like North Africa, so kind of Egypt, but I've never done like anything South, so I'd love to do that. Mm, at some point, yeah, I definitely will be there soon. I can't say soon, but I definitely want to get down to Africa. One of my definitely bucket list places to go. Hey Shu, hey Josh, great for seek improvements and strength progression. What's your current split in training volume? Number of sets per muscle group per week from your video seems you lowered the volume than your last prep, but your body seems to be responding better to this. I've always felt the push pull legs times two per week, then a rest day worked and felt best for. Probably read that wrong. Uh, yeah, so my split at the moment is Monday back thickness, well, day one back thickness, day two uh, chest delts biceps, day three rest, day four legs, day five back width. Day six, hamstrings, delts, and triceps. Uh, and then day seven is a rest. And then I go back to the first one, repeat. But I'm on a two week schedule. So I have legs one, legs two, chest one, chest two examples. So I've got uh, 10 sessions in total that I go through. I go through all, all 10 and then I go back to the start all 10. So I know I probably, so for example, I'll do incline press every two weeks. I'll do my Smith machine press every two weeks. Um, and I'm not coming back to anything other than two weeks apart. Um, Volume, I probably do about 20 sets per uh, per workout, maybe a little less in some cases. On chest, I do six sets a week. Yes, guys, I do six sets a week. But these, I'm telling you guys, these sets are to failure. I'm barely moving after these sets. I need to gasp for air. I can't even hold a conversation in between sets because they're really, really, really intense. The volume is way, way lower, but the frequency is quite high. But the intensity is just is just through the roof. So. Uh, last question, final question guys, sorry this has dragged on a little bit, MJROX87, as you time your carbs around training, do you time them on rest recovery days or just space them out throughout the day? Keep up the vids, man, awesome channel, thank you dude, appreciate that. Um, yeah, so on rest days, guys this is quite a cool little thing I can add on to this, on rest days my calories are 2,700, so uh, two days a week I'm eating 2,700 calories, on the rest of them I'm eating 4,700-ish calories. Um, so it does bring my average down a little bit. Um, which also negates a little bit of fat gain. Carbs, um, I have breakfast no carbs, second meal no carbs, third meal carbs, fourth meal carbs, fifth meal no carbs, sixth meal no carbs. So it's no specific timing, normally just around middle of the day because I've been awake, I've been active for you know a good few hours. So therefore my body could probably do with a little bit of glycogen just to get me through the day. But I never overindulge in the glycogen on rest days because I don't need it, I'm not using it for anything other than my 10,000 steps. Um, which is probably why I stay a little bit leaner throughout this bowl. Yeah, I uh, hope you guys got some good information. 
um, through those. If you've got any more questions, never hesitate to ask. Send me a message, drop me an email, um, and I'm always going to get back to you guys. Um, I just want one more thing to say just for myself. Um, I am doing personal training uh, online, and I have got a few more clients, and they are coming in. Um, so I'd love for you guys, if you guys need anything personal training-wise, just give me a shout. I can send you over all my price lists, all the, all the offers that I do. And I'd love to get, to get some of you guys signed up. Um, and plus, it'll help me because my rent is fucking expensive. Nice one, guys. Um, we'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Peace.